Wait, is this just gate? Chapter 338. Written by Pepper Antique. So. Gorner. Tell me a bit about centaur culture. James said as he rode along down the road, Amina's arms loosely wrapped around his waist. I don't know much about you guys. Petrovus has them. But I haven't spoken to too many. The centaur woman, who had been silently walking next to Steve as they travelled, scoffed. She'd made a point of ignoring James almost as hard as Amina had initially ignored her. She'd also practically begged for Amina to ride on her back instead of on Steve's. James hadn't even weighed in on that conversation, simply holding his wolf hand down to Amina confidently. She hadn't even slowed down to consider the offer, much to the centaur's chagrin. I am not a schoolmaster interloper. She said venomously. James just shrugged and turned back to the road. Oh by the gods. Amina said in exasperation. She turned in the saddle, releasing her hold on James to look over at her devoted follower. Gorna. James is my husband. It's one thing if you dislike him or avoid him. But I will not have you openly disrespect him. Understood? James looked back at her curiously. He didn't care either way. But he nodded his appreciation. Then he heard a slight rumbling, grinding noise from on the other side of Steve. Normally that sound would mean the massive drake was readying a breath of fire. But there was no heat with this rumble. Glag on the other hand was looking in the direction of the centaur, his eyes looking much more aware than they normally did as he walked along. James wondered if he could sense Gorna somehow, since he couldn't see her past Steve's bulk. Is he readying to defend me? He wondered. But Glag simply kept walking and rumbling with that semi-observant look on his face as he, in his own way, glared in Gorna's direction. The centaur stamped at the ground with her hooves a bit, causing her to bounce up and down and make a small change in her direction before course correcting. Yes mistress. She said angrily. It's obvious that you have no intention of letting this whole proposition thing go. Amina continued as she turned back and placed a hand on James's side again. Despite my protestations and the extenuating circumstances around it. So until you eventually give up or find your conditions met, however that may occur, we are a travelling party. We need to at least be able to exist around each other and communicate. Then she pointed a harsh finger at the centaur. And I've told you before, quit calling me mistress. Amina is fine. Or princess or general if you insist on formality. Yes mi dash, Gorna began, but Amina's finger rose back up at the sound. Princess. She corrected herself. And you can just call me James. James added casually. Or. I guess. Captain. If you wanna do that formally too. He shook his head. It's been a year and I still don't like that. He said softly to Amina. The three of them rode in awkward silence for a few moments, with Glag simply walking along without tiring. He'd stopped rumbling too. I was. I am, not terribly, liked by my people. Gorner admitted quietly. James turned to look at her with a raised eyebrow. Amina simply set her head on his shoulder on the side of the centaur. It was obvious from Gorner's downcast face that she didn't like admitting that. I am smaller than most centaurs. And a woman. She continued. And I was never terribly good at fighting. James wanted to say something to the contrary of that, but was silenced by Amina squeezing him with the hand on his side. At least not in the traditional ways of my people. You were certainly strong in our fight. Amina said. Yes. But. I rely on magic. And the enchantment on my daggers. I am only passably good with a bow and arrow. And, as you found out yourself, I struggle to compete in direct melee combat. Gorna countered with a hint of anger. My people favor the sword and axe and spear, and I am not terribly capable with any of those to a sufficient degree. But not all centaurs are warriors. Amina said. I know many that are craftsmen, or artists. Many who take jobs as messengers or supply escorts or scouts. And again, I am smaller and weaker than most of my kind. And not terribly artistic either. 
and those last three jobs all require warrior skills. And most centaurs get picked for them before me. You are a little smaller than the handful of centaurs I've seen. James said. Gorna glared at him, but a warning glance from Amina kept her quiet. But. I'm smaller than most humans. And I still almost won the tournament. No you didn't dear. Amina said quickly, causing him to try to look back at her with mock anger. But her head stayed locked where it was, preventing him from turning without getting a face full of hair, and her offhand grabbed the back of his head and pointed it straight. After a moment he reluctantly stopped struggling. He is right though. She added. Size isn't everything. Not to most. Gorner agreed. I do know that now. Now that I'm older, and have traveled some. Traveled alone. She shook her head. But, when I was young I was, for all intents and purposes exiled from my clan. What clan were you? Amina asked. Northern Range Horde. Gorna said softly. Hum. Amina hummed. They spawn a lot of mercenary companies. I can see them not being a fan of someone they deem as weak. She'd read a great many intelligence reports about the strength of the Northern Range Horde, and had even faced a company of one of their mercenary groups when she'd still just been a captain. I assume you didn't get your dagger dancing, from them? James asked. No. She admitted. No. That I picked up from an arbalestia I traveled with for a while. He used bolts that could change angle mid-flight. Gave me the idea for the daggers. You were trying to win the tournament to get them to accept you? James followed up. Gorna looked over, a bit surprised at how well he'd read her intentions. Yes. She admitted. The continued walking for a minute in silence. I'm not sorry that I beat you. Amina said after a few moments. Don't be. Gorna said. The god of war desires combat. Survive defeat is simply a chance to grow in skill and gain greater, more satisfying, victory in future battles. Amina felt James stiffen. But she spoke before he could say anything. So long as the cost is low enough. Defeat grants more experience than victory. Amina agreed. Glag. Glag weighed in. Well said Glag. James remarked. Glag Glag. Glag replied. By the way. Gorna said. Why is that thing following you? No idea. James admitted. But I'm not looking to fight him about it. Glag. Glag said. And the four of them continued down the road. Samantha yawned as the van rumbled over the gravel road out of the recreational area. Ha! Huh. Fletcher said as he looked back from the passenger seat. Looks like we finally found you guys' limits. Never seen any of you guys exhausted before. Could see it a bit more often if you wanted. She said softly. What? He asked as he turned back, a look of confusion on his face. Nothing. She replied. She always got too candid when she was tired. Just that it was the squirrel's fault. Heh. Yeah, he said in response. You guys chased that thing for like, half an hour. She laughed a bit. At least until the food was done. Fletcher turned a bit and looked back at the other werewolves. If any of them were still awake, he couldn't tell. The youngest one was curled into the crook of Mrs. Ramirez's shoulder. The older woman had taken the role of the newly orphaned child's makeshift mother. They look up to you you know? He asked quietly. He pointed at the rest of the small group. Not just them either. But the rest too. Yeah right. She said as she looked out the window, her head vibrating against the glass. I'm serious. He said. They listen to you. He pointed back again. You didn't see the looks on their faces when we opened the cooler with all the meat in it. They were ready to rip that burger meat to shreds. And Estevez's arm would have come out unscathed if they had. He nodded at her. You stopped them with nothing but words and a bit of a growl. She thought back to it. Had that been how it had looked? 
To her it had just been her reminding them to act like people and not like the animals that that supposed God had tried to make them. No. She said, shaking her head. That was just. No. Cliché or not. He said. You're kind of the leader of. Well, the pack. She looked away, her eyes darting around a bit as she thought about that for a moment. Don't want to be the pack leader. She said. Didn't even want to be an NCO. Just wanted to get my criminology and then go CID. Didn't want to be a werewolf either. He said. Don't remind me. She shot back. Dr. Estevez stayed quiet in the driver's seat. Dr. Munro had warned him that Jenkins had a bit of a crush on the lawyer. I didn't want to be a lawyer. He said. She looked over at him in surprise, her head tilting like it did now. Or live in Dakota. But, a, hey, You make do. Really? She asked curiously. What did you want to do? He let out a chuckle. I wanted to be a guitarist. He admitted. Turns out I'm tone deaf. Aharan can't keep a beat to save my soul. And that. Made you a lawyer? She asked. A, more like the tail end of a long series of dominoes. He said. And it's not like it compares to what you guys are going through. Then he shrugged. Plus. Like a lot of guys' stories. It kinder involves a girl. Ah. She said. Makes sense. They rode in silence for a while. You're handling it well. He said after a while. She looked over at him curiously. The whole, wolf thing. He explained. I can't imagine what it's like. Losing everything. Even your own instincts. She thought for a while. Wasn't exactly fun she agreed. But. Now that I've been this way for a while. There are some upsides. She confessed. Yeah. He wondered. Like what? Bench pressing a pickup truck is pretty sweet I guess. That's one. She agreed. Then she looked back at the others. But, well, I don't know about the whole leader thing. But. I think I might have been alone before. You know? Without realizing it. It's nice not to be. Dr. Munro actually cares about me. She's like that. He said. She got in trouble a few years back before all this for, well, that's her story to tell. But, let's just say that she'll definitely throw down to take care of her patients. Plus them. She said with a wave at the other wolves. I'm glad you guys let us meet each other. It's nice not to be alone in all of this. Would you two just make out already? One of the ones in the back asked with a slight raise of their head. They pointed at their ears. Super hearing remember? Trying to sleep. True. Another one slurred through their exhaustion. If it hadn't been for her fur, Samantha would have blushed. Fletcher just looked straight ahead, eyes wide. Dr. Estevez tried not to chuckle, and almost, succeeded.